How's it going everybody? Intimidation here and I'm uh, doing my second part of my how to start an ant colony, identifying queen ants uh, for beginners and uh, last time I covered a little bit of anatomy for queens, uh, how you can distinguish queens from other uh, workers, worker ants or other insects that may appear to be ants. Um, and today I'm just going to go a little bit into what I keep queen ants in, in the beginning stages. So when you first get a queen and you capture uh, your first queen, I put them in just your basic test tube setup with uh, water and pretty much half the tube. And, uh, and that's all you pretty much need until, mm, I guess the colony gets to around 10 workers or so, depending on the size of the uh, species, obviously. Um, but sometimes what I do is I take another test tube of the same size, same width, and I just attach it to the end of this one to act as a foraging tube. So you can imagine, you know, just sticking it on the end so they can forage into another tube this direction. Um, and then you can, you know, wrap it with whatever you want, like a tape or, or clay or something like that. Now, when you first catch your queen, what you're going to do is probably keep her somewhere dark, somewhere quiet for two or three days. Uh, let her settle down. Let her get uh, let her get situated, and then sometimes after this, these two or three days, she'll already have her first uh, eggs. So um, then you can pull them out of the darkness, uh, put them somewhere where light can hit the test tube, and you can cover the test tube with something that's you know to shade it so it won't get direct light. But you can bring her out into the light after you know two or three days. So um, and start from there. Um, today I'm going to go over a little bit of how you, how you feed your queen, uh, how to feed your queen, um, what, uh, how to, uh, what to expect, you know, how long it takes you to get to your first workers, and uh, stuff like that. So if you're interested, uh, please stick around and uh, I'll show you some, uh, show you the next steps. Alright guys. Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with a Marmacocystis testaceus queen. Um, I caught her earlier this spring and she's she's got a little clutch of eggs in there. And uh, what I wanted to show you guys was, I showed you this in the first part of the movie where, you know, it's a basic test tube setup. And I, I wanted to point out how to change the test tube when it gets dirty like this. There's some some mold in there and the most important part is there's no water that's the most important part um, now usually um, you just get yourself a fresh test tube ready to go, an empty one and uh, what I'm going to show you is a little technique that I picked up from a friend of mine Ants Canada who uh, who's you know exemplified and perfected this technique 
and shared it on his behalf with me and uh, it's, it is, is a very very cool technique and uh, I'll show you that in a second um, so yeah we have our queen we have our dirty test tube we have no water so we're like oh no we need to change the tube what do we get to do so let's take for example this other test tube that I have that's dry as well there's no queen in there but I'm just gonna show you uh, for example so you put the this is the technique that I was talking about that Mikey uh, kind of perfected and it's really easy. You take one of these wooden skewers that you can find in any sc any store, just you know, general uh, wooden skewers, and uh, you break it in half and you get a little frayed end. Uh, you make it frayed on the end, but just by breaking it, it automatically becomes frayed anyway. And then you um, stick it in the tube and you gently start to twist as you're pushing forward along the side and the cotton just wraps right around that frayed frayed end and you pull out most and what's best what's what's really cool about this is convenient is that it as you're twisting and dragging it's pulling out all the dirt along the test tube pretty much all of it I mean there's probably gonna be a little elbow work that you're gonna use that you're gonna do to to get most of it but um, it pulls out all the dirt with it you know and then you can just throw that away put it in a jar or whatever um, and there you go. See, you have the test tube ready to go, fill back up with water, um, and then use it again. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, that queen had eggs, so what am I supposed to do when the queen has all these little eggs in here? Um, well, I'll show you. So you take that very same, uh, wooden skewer, right? Now you're gonna dab, what I do is I dab it on my tongue, get a little saliva, and you slide it along the glass, or along the plastic, whichever kind of test tube you have, and you gently just go along and you pick up each little egg. Usually they come up, usually it comes out in a little clump. And when you do that, it sticks right to the tip because of the saliva. And then you get your fresh tube, and you slide that right back down in there and you just tap it along the glass and, and drop the eggs off in the fresh tube. Now the queen will just slide in there. She'll just, you know, just tap the end of the test tube and she should uh, she should fall into the new tube. Should be as easy as that. Easy as that. Now that's uh, that's one way you can keep your queens. I'll show you guys an alternative of uh, of what to keep your queens in uh, in just a second. So stay tuned. All right guys. All right, so I showed you a little bit about uh, the test tubes, how to how to change them out, um, how to kind of clean them, um, and now I'm going to show you how to fill them up. If uh, you're not familiar with it, it's pretty easy. Um, but there's some important uh, notes that you should make um, when I when I show you this. So here we have just a basic uh, test tube, and uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with water about halfway, okay, and then I'm going to get a cotton ball okay and this part's important um, you want to make a nice tight seal with the cotton ball almost to the point where it's hard to push down the tube okay and uh, what I use is believe it or not one chopstick <laughs> um, and I use the uh, the round end and I push that down now what you want to do is when you're pushing it down you want to make it so you get as little air behind the cotton as possible. You want to get it solid. And then you tap it down. Make sure this whole cotton is moist all the way up to here. And you're just tapping it against there, making it a nice smooth surface. Okay. Then you have a nice seal. seal. So, you know, that cotton's tight in there and you have a nice just a gradual gradual evaporation into this part of the tube and that's what you want now what else is important is that you put the closing cotton in tight as well okay so that makes it even more uh, efficient this water will last longer if you leave it loose on the end uh, water can evaporate f uh, faster out the end of the tube okay so if you put this in tight it'll, it'll uh, it'll last you a lot longer. So there you go. So that's how you set up a test tube. 
um, for queen ant or a small colony. And uh, that one's ready to go, so I can put uh, I can put a little small colony in there or a queen. So put that over there. And next, I'm going to show you guys an alternative way to um, to keep your queens. If you don't have any test tubes, um, another thing that you can use is CD cases. And I'm sure most people have CD cases um, just lying around. Maybe you have some old CDs that you don't want anymore, right? Um, and I took this one from like an old live CD that I don't really listen to anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, these are what I used to use before I used, uh, before I used to use uh, test tubes, and they work very well. And I'll tell you why in a second here. Um, but first, I'm going to cover how to put it together. Okay, so you have the regular, you have your regular jewel case here, and I keep the I keep the hinges connected. You can choose to break this off and flip it upside down and have both flat side against flat side if you want. But I like having the little enclosure. It's kind of like a quarter inch enclosure, you know, the, the width of a CD case basically. And what you do is you take cotton, okay, and I had this just resting on there for an example, but what you do is you, you break it into a long skinny shape just like what I've done here, right? Then you're gonna moisten it and you're gonna you're gonna make a circle uh, it might take you three or four cotton balls to make a full circle, but you're going to connect them all together and make a circle, okay? And you want to get a good seal, okay? So when you close the, the CD case, you have a nice sealed circle in the center, okay? And the cotton will be wet, mind you, okay? So let's pretend you have that circle in here, okay? And this is the best part about having this type of setup, okay? When you do that, you make you make this whole area open. So to feed the queen, you can open this, you can drill a hole in the top, and you can put a little piece of cotton, and then you can take the cotton out, drop a little something in there, then put the cotton back, so on and so forth. You can do that. Um, or you can mess with just opening the top. Uh, she might run out though, so I, I advise the first uh, option I gave you. But you can also fill the inside of the the circled cotton with dirt or wood chips or whatever you want and and put it along the side or the outside uh, border of the center circle and that way she has some stuff to move around uh, it adds a little bit more uh, character to the to the setup you know it's it's a little bit more natural for her and uh, it works well you can put you can put a sun yeah, you can, a, you can put a light source right over top of the CD case, put something over to shade her, and she'll have plenty of heat that way. Now, um, when you close the, the case, and let's say you have it all set up, all you do is add water in this open trough. It's perfect. Now, I try to get the cotton along the edge of this when I do the circle. So when you add water, it immediately soaks into the cotton, goes all the way around, soaks into the dirt or whatever you have, whatever material you have in the middle. And it, that's the way, that's how you keep her moist. Uh, in that, you can keep the queen in the atmosphere inside moist. It's it's it works perfect. Um, and it makes for a, a really good uh, viewing to view the the queen. It's a nice flat surface, and it works really well. So that's another alternative to keeping a a, a queen ant when you first capture her, and she can she can have a good sized colony in there. Uh, you know, five to ten workers before you move them somewhere else. And that's all, uh, that's all I'm pretty much going to cover today. Uh, and stay tuned for uh, part three of my uh, how to uh, raise your colony of the first workers and how to identify queens and uh, take care of your ants. All right, guys. Take care. Peace.